Hi guys, happy new year. I'm Sarah, the Real Simple Mama, and I have chickens. And today we're gonna talk about all about feathers and molting, because I realized I haven't done a video specifically teaching you about what a molt is, what it looks like, and plus, my sweet little Gracie bird has exactly one tail feather. <laughs> And it just cracks me up. It's the funniest thing. So I thought I would come out and do a video to teach you about chicken feathers, what molting is, what you can do. Go Air Force. What you can do to help your birds through a molt. Do they need a bath? All kinds of stuff related to chicken feathers. So we're just going to watch my flock and their little shenanigans right now. And so you can see... Um, my other content about when I got these these chickens I have five and the black one in the middle is the alpha Calypso who I've raised from a chick but the others I've gotten um, sort of as rescues and a couple of them are going through a pretty nasty molt so let's talk about molting first and what it is and then we'll just get into feathers and all kinds of nerdy chicken stuff like that so a molt which is spelled m-o-l-t is essentially what chickens or you know lots of different animals will, will go through about once a year and it can be you know just like Gracie Bird where she still has feathers on her she's the the barred rock so the one that looks almost like she has a, a striping or like a newspaper print look on your far left or some birds will lose like practically every feather and they look totally ridiculous and hilarious um, a lot of times it happens in the early spring, but it kind of depends on when your birds were hatched, if that makes sense. So it's it's sort of like on the anniversary of their birthday as opposed to every chicken loses their feathers in January. Um, hens and roosters will go through this. And essentially the reason that it happens is because feathers don't continue to grow. They're not like our hair. They're not like our fingernails and that you have to clip them regularly because they just keep growing. Once a feather is grown and it's come out of their body, out of their skin, as far as it's gonna go, that's it. And that feather is gonna stay exactly in place until it's shed. And instead of you know them shedding a little bit at a time, which I don't know why, instinctively like you know down through um, evolution why chickens molt all at the same time as opposed to it being a little bit at a time but you know, that's what it is so your chickens once they, they will not molt until they're over a year old so when they're just chicks you know they have just the down and then their their actual contour feathers their main feathers start to grow in and we'll talk more about that and how it it works with chicks in a minute but then after that, your chickens will molt probably about once a year. And what stinks is, like I said, it happens kind of all at once. And then it's going to take a long time for those feathers to come in. Poor Gracie, the one again who's on your far left who's showing you her little fanny right there. I've had her since July. And she looks better than she did. But that tail feather that she's got that looks like, you know, somebody just stuck it in her like, pink. Um, she, that tail feather has been growing since July. And it's now January. So, I mean, the poor thing. I know and you can see some of her wing contour feathers they're coming back in um, so let's talk about how that that looks with grown chickens there are a couple of things and I'll knock this out really quick as far as helping your chickens through a molt while it may seem cute and fun don't put clothes on your chickens um, they don't need sweaters or anything like that because you're taking away their ability to control their own body temperature. So don't do anything like that. What you can do to help your chickens is make sure, especially if they're molting in the winter or the early spring, sometime when it's not like their ideal temperature, that you make sure you give them a, a place that's out of, out of the way of drafts um, to where they can just go if they feel like they're getting too cold. The other thing you can do to help your chickens through a molt is make sure you're giving them plenty of high protein. Now, their normal layer feed is fine, and once a chicken is full grown, they go to the layer food, right? Because they are laying age, they're laying eggs. The protein count there is higher, excuse me, it's actually lower, sorry, than, um, than chick feed because chicks are growing. Um, so layer feed usually has, depending on the brand, it's probably got 14 to 16% protein. Um, you can find a food like Feather Fixer is another food, but it has a higher percentage of protein. Um, more protein will help your chickens grow their feathers back more quickly, but it is going to take a minimum of six weeks. It could take months and months. It just depends on the bird. Um, some birds, when they're molting, now the good thing about Gracie is hers are growing back really slowly, but she didn't go like completely, you know, plucked naked hen. Um, 
she still had a decent amount of feathers on her. All of the birds that you've seen, except for Calypso, who's actually almost two, they've all gone through a molt while they've been with me. Callie, honestly, the black one on your far right, my big girl, she hasn't really gone through a molt yet that I can tell. All right, so now let's talk about feathers. There are all different kinds of feathers and you can kind of get crazy about the different parts and their names in Latin and you know all of this other insanity. But for intents and purposes, the two feathers that we're gonna talk about, there are two kinds and you probably know what they are. The first kind, and let me grab my model here. The first kind is a contour feather and let me make sure we're focused here, is a contour feather, which is the main feather that they have particularly on their wings and on their tail. These feathers are really cool for lots of reasons. First of all, they, um, can be waterproofed by a gland that your chicken has down by their tail and they waterproof themselves. The other thing that's cool about these feathers is these feathers, these contour feathers, which are the feathers normally that we see, right? Your chicken, it's, <laughs> when I decided to do this video, it's like, well, I just need to go pick some feathers out of the yard. Your chicken uses these feathers to make themselves cooler or warmer. This is how they regulate their body temperature. And I'm trying to do this with one hand, so just um, imagine here with me. But when your chicken is cold and they need to warm up, they fluff themselves up, which I can't demo right now because it's like in the 70s here, because, you know, Texas. But they fluff themselves up and then essentially they create air pockets in between each layer of their feathers and then their body heat warms up those little air pockets so they insulate themselves. When it's warm, yeah. They flatten themselves down and push all of that air out and they cool themselves off by not holding air into their bodies. It's kind of the difference between making yourself like one of those big poofy, my kids call them like the marshmallow jackets, those puffy jackets, or taking everything off. So these are contour feathers. The other feathers, which you probably know of, are the little floofy, fluffy ones that are usually on the undercarriage <clears throat> of your bird or they're up against their body. So we don't necessarily see these when they're under the, the bird's wings, for example. This is called down, D-O-W-N. And this stuff is super awesome, super insulating. You may have a blanket or a comforter or something like that that's got down in it. Um, and it's really light, really fluffy. The composition of the feather is a little bit different because it doesn't have the barbs that hold the, the, the different components of the feathers together. And actually, I was doing some research to make sure I had all the terminology correct before I did this video. And these, the barbs that keep each like lane of the feather, you can, I'm trying to do it gracefully with one hand, that's not happening. You can pull them apart by going one way, but then if you pet it the other way, they stick together again. And microscopically, that's literally like a little Velcro, like a little type hook mechanism that's doing that intentionally. And that's so that the bird can control, yes, I want this holding air pockets in to keep me warm, or no, I don't. Now, as far as the parts of the feather, again, I'm, I'm not gonna get in a whole lot to the terminology because I don't want you guys falling asleep and like drooling on your computer. So for usefulness, this is called the barb here, right? Which is the hard part. And the base that's, you know, usually naked because it's, it's in the bird's flesh or in their skin is called the quill, right? Like we used to use for pens. Okay, this is something where we kind of get into, um, you know, the mind of the chicken, like be a chicken, visualize yourself as a chicken. But this is what I have read, you know, as the feather is growing, it's growing out of their skin like this, right? So this tip end of the barb is what's coming out first, right, as it grows. Um, so it is my assumption, it is my opinion from watching these birds and then just listening to other people talk about chickens who have had chickens for years and years and years, that that process where that barb is growing out of their skin is at best really, really itchy and at worst really uncomfortable. And unfortunately, like we were talking about, look at this bird, where do you think you're going? Um, it's a very slow process and so it's either really really itchy in which hint hint dust bath make sure your chickens have plenty of opportunities for them to scratch and roll around and, and get in the dirt um, but also just kind of be aware you don't need to be picking up your birds all the time when they're molting like don't be cuddling them don't be putting the stupid sweaters on them and things like that the only time a bird may need that is if they're an indoor chicken or something like that or I mean maybe you put it on like to take a picture and then take it off but you basically take away everything evolutionary that um, you know that a chicken has to be able to control their own body temperature when you take control by doing something like putting a stupid sweater on them but just be in mind when they are molting they're not gonna want to be held they're not gonna want to be cuddled um, they are gonna want to be able to scratch and and um, you know shake around and be in a dust bath because it's it's probably a very uncomfortable process now if anybody speaks chicken you know ask them what they think 
um, and you can tell me for sure, but I have a feeling it's probably a very uncomfortable process. Now, let's talk about once the feathers are growing in. Nike Gracie, God, she looks so ridiculous. I hope you know I love you, Gracie Bird. She's my sassy girl. She's kind of like me. She's like super chill until you like mess with her snacks. She's cool like 99% of the time, but if you piss her off, it's like, oh geez. So once the feathers are grown in, and this is something that I guess for us as chicken owners is nice. Once the feathers have grown in, they're in. Again, it's not like a haircut. You got to go every month or two to get a haircut or anything like that. Once the feathers are grown, they absolutely do not move. They do not change. So what does that mean for us as chicken owners? Well, first of all, like I said, they're only going to molt once a year. Thank goodness. And I mean, if you kind of look in the yard, there's, there's, you know, like down feathers. And I know my finger's not focused. Sorry. Um, you know, it looks in there like somebody did a magic trick and a chicken just kind of went Pff. They're inside because they hop down their ramp in the morning and all of their down that's coming out just kind of goes and just like falls off. But you only need to worry about molting with your birds once a year. Again, it'll depend on when they were born or when they were hatched. And the other thing is you only, if you clip their wings, which if your birds are free ranging or, you know, I, I mean, I don't see why people wouldn't want to free range unless they're just super like hands off in the sense that I want my birds to have as natural a life as possible. Um, for me, anybody who's backyard that has a backyard situation has backyard chickens, I don't see why you wouldn't clip wings or at least clip one like we did. That's, that's worked, but you only have to clip their wings once a season. It's not like clipping your nails and that you clip it, but that that's constantly growing. They don't continue to grow. They grow in until they're the length they're going to be. And that's it. So that's good to know. Right. Calibird. Now, let me backtrack a little bit because, you know, I, as I kind of did the intro to this video, I thought, oh, I want to tell them about this and, oh, I want to teach them about this and, ah, because this is exciting. And I like for people to not just have pets or buy pets or get chickens and not really know what they're doing, but I want them to, to be fairly educated. And my dog is like, I don't know what she's doing. So please excuse the random barking. All right. So let's talk about chicks. If you happen to get chicks, we're talking about baby chickens here. We're not talking about like Never mind. Okay, so if you have baby chickens, if you have chicks, they cannot control their body temperature until their contour feathers, wait for it, wait for it, oh no, it blew away, wait for these to grow in completely on their body so that they look like a pullet or a cockerel, which takes, man, I don't even remember, a minimum of six or eight weeks, probably more than that, before you can put them outside. Until their feathers, these feathers, are completely grown in, your chickens cannot control their body temperature. So you can't put them outside. They still need the heat lamp. And you can see other videos that I've got about, you know, how to set up a brooder and things like that. You can have the heat lamp on one side and then another side so they can kind of adjust. Yeah, I need to be standing under the heat lamp or no, I'm too hot. Um, but your chickens, when they're babies, when they're chicks, and they just have this stuff, this is nice and insulating and warm, but you have to remember... In evolution, like out in nature, what would your baby chicks be doing? They would be hiding underneath their mother hen, and the mother hen would be keeping them warm with her wings, which guess what are these. So your little chicks cannot regulate their own temperature. You can't be like, oh, well, we got the coop, so you guys are living outside. Peace out. Okay, they can't do that until they have these. Breeds of chickens who don't have typical feathers. These are the feathers, again, that can be waterproofed. Your birds can waterproof them. Um, breeds like frizzles or particularly silkies, which are the cute, you know, I don't know, foofy looking chickens. They don't have those contour feathers at all. They have a combo feather that's sort of like down and it's kind of like one of these. But guess what? They can't waterproof their feathers. They cannot regulate their body temperature even when they are adults. So if you have silkies, which are really great with kids, from what I understand, they're really good for showing. A lot of people think that they're really cute. Um, they don't have these feathers. So guess what? They can never regulate their body temperature. So just check if you're getting a goofy breed like Frizzles, they're really cute. Their feathers, it reminds me of like Nancy Drew, like old school. Their feathers all flip out. So they look kind of like they've been electrocuted, like bzz, and their feathers just kind of have curled out and poofed out in every direction. But they don't have, and now I've got to grab another one, they don't have that typical contour feather. Silkies don't have a typical contour feather. So it, when, when you're looking at breeds or when you've got your birds, you need to keep that in mind. This is what helps them insulate themselves. Mm -hmm. Right? Do you have anything to add? No? All right, moving on. So the other thing is, and I'm gonna have to deal with this <clears throat> situation. Thank you for being a model. What if your chickens need a bath? Oh Lord. I have not ever bathed my chickens because it sounds like hell. 
but as my neighbor decides to mow because awesome I'm gonna try to, to cup the microphone here because I'm almost done anyway um, when it comes to bathing your chickens yes they're waterproof but did you see that let me see if I can get Lacey to do that you can see she has a ton this is all down all on her backside all the fluffy feathers that are not the black and white that's all the down feathers so, so she's not waterproof on the bottom <laughs> You can certainly bathe your chickens. The concern is you don't want them to get too cold because you've kind of screwed up their ability to make those insulating pockets. I want to come out and clean my girls' butts. There's nothing wrong with them having a little bit of poof, poop on them because they have poofy butts, it's gonna happen. But I just don't like it. I don't want it to get any worse. So when the weather's warm enough, I if you've seen my other content, you know that I tend to like to be minimalistic. Like don't go all out and do something crazy and over the top and expensive. If there's a solution that yes will help your bird that yes is you being responsible and taking care of them but it's just not as extravagant right so I'm honestly gonna come out with like wet paper towels I don't want my birds to get any wetter than they have to be because I'm not gonna come out and blow dry them we're gonna do it after bedtime when it's in the 40s 50s and I'm just gonna grab them by their legs hang them upside down grab those feathers and kind of do this kind of thing while holding the towel and get as much of it off as I can. That's not a health hazard. It's not dangerous for them as long as it's just a little bit. If it starts to be um, their vent, which is their um, <clears throat> in and out door in the back, um, if that starts to be obscured or to where when they're pooping it's just going on them because it can't fall off or anything like that, then you definitely need to bathe your bird. And you can look at people like the chicken chick or backyard chickens um, there's lots of different groups, so they have videos and they have lots of tips on how to bathe their birds. But that's more of, you know, something, not necessarily traumatic, but something really extreme happened to your chicken. Not like, oh, they've got a little bit of dirt on them or, oh, they have a little bit of poop on them. But this is like, hey, they've gotten attacked by a dog and I can't see how bad the damage is because she's all matted up with spit and mud and stuff like that. So don't feel like, oh, it's the first of the month. I have to go out and bathe my chickens. It's not like that at all. You can certainly bathe your birds, but again, I would tend to do the more minimalistic thing. Just to clean them up a little bit as needed. And just remember, you know, if you get their feathers wet, especially they're down, their ability to control their body temperature, to regulate it, has been minimized a little bit until they dry. So you want to try to do that in ideal conditions, either take them inside or do it when, you know, the temperature is not too hot and not too cold and that way there's not any kind of a risk. What is a lacy bird? So, all kinds of information on feathers. The feathers that, is, that are on their faces, uh, they have a different name, but it's the same concept. There is a little bit of a barb on that feather. Usually, when a chicken molts, they will not really lose the feathers on their face. Those teeny tiny little ones, they won't lose those. I don't know why. Um, again, as far as evolution, I don't know why they would lose everything else and not those. I don't get it. Um, but that doesn't happen. Right, girls? So, molting is going to happen once a year after your chickens are a year old. Roosters, hens, everybody. For some of them, it's not that bad. For others, like you can go and look at molting again, M O L T molting pictures some of them it's like like it looks like it's like a plucked bird that's just walking around like it's hilarious um, you do need to keep in mind that your birds need a place where they can get out of the rain or get out of the wind um, if you've seen some of my coop videos about winterizing your coop you remember that it's not the cold air necessarily that's the problem it's the draft um, if there's cooled air or like a breeze going on above their head that's not the problem the problem is if it's down on their level which is why on my coop for example almost all the way around it's blocked off with a bag so all five of my birds can go in there and get out of the wind and get out of the rain realize that molting is going to be an uncomfortable process for them as far as taking those feathers a long time to grow in it's probably the equivalent maybe of us getting like our molars in or something it's just uncomfortable and it takes forever and there's nothing you can do to speed it up except trying to give them a food that's got a little bit more higher protein I've used feather fixer a little bit um, this is my first molt so I kind of was just like well let's give you guys some of this food just to kind of help out and yay um, you know the higher protein does help out I don't feel like it's a necessity but if you can afford it and you want to get it it's eight bucks for about a 10 pound bag so it is going to be more expensive than just you know your normal layer food which for me is 40 pounds for 15 dollars um, so you know I kind of just did both I kind of mixed it up 
The other thing you want to remember as your birds are molting and see she's probably getting in that that waterproof oil making gland down on her back. She gets that waterproofing oil on her beak and then she wipes it all over her feathers. Maybe that's not what she's doing. I don't know enough about that that gland that's got a really weird name that starts with a U. I don't remember what it's called. Um, but they get the the waterproofing oil that repels water and they put it all over their feathers. Pretty cool, huh? What? What was that? What? But try not to cuddle your birds. Try to just remember that they're going to want to dust bathe and they're going to want to lay out and they're going to want to be comfortable. Now the preening like my two Easter eggers are doing there in the back center, that's totally normal. There's nothing wrong with them. It doesn't mean they have mites or anything like that. They're constantly feeling their feathers, maybe pulling out one that's uncomfortable, spreading that oil, like I said. I mean, everything is fine. If they look like they're doing it obsessively, like they're trying to eat and they just can't stop, um, then you might want to grab them and check them for mites. I'll do another video in the spring about mites as it starts to get warm. Um, but essentially mites are um, like poultry lice. It's the same thing as like ticks for us is that they want to get down to that <coughs> shaft, the base of the base of the feather and suck out all of the nutrients that's down here. So you can't just look at a chicken right there and say, yep, they have mites or no, they don't. Um, unless the infestation is really bad. Otherwise you have to kind of dig down in the, in the feathers and look down underneath but that's that's another video but preening is totally normal um whether they're molting or not chickens they just do that they're spreading the oil they're kind of getting everything where they want like it's totally fine clipping their wings um i will try after these birds are done molting and the new feathers have all come in when i have to cut wings again i will take pictures but it doesn't hurt the chicken they can't feel it and then they won't be able to escape and then you don't have to clip their wings again until next season when they've grown back in so that's just the right amount of nerd, I hope, <laughs> for all about feathers and all about molting, my poor little girls. So see, Gracie, not to zoom in too close on her butt, but all she has all back there is just down. Just the floofy part, which does help keep her warm, yes, but it's not the waterproofing. So we just got five happy birds just chilling out. So if you have any questions, if you have any suggestions, if you have comments, anything you've noticed about feathers, um, cool things you do with feathers, um, I haven't collected them for anything, but of course, I mean, they're hanging around in your yard. So, I mean, you could pick them up and make crafts with them or, you know, do whatever. But if you have any uh, comments, questions, suggestions, I try to always get back. I, I apologize. My YouTube, like, comments... Um, notifications have been like crazy off so like rich has been sending me emails which I appreciate um, you know Dean sends me messages which I appreciate if you've been leaving messages I need to go and like reinstall that app because it's been goofy but normally I do respond to every comment to every question you guys give me ideas because y'all are usually smarter than I am um, but now you've watched the whole video so it's too late haha <laughs> Um, I hope you guys are all doing well let me know what's going on with your chicken feathers anything goofy or funny that you've noticed with your birds Ooh, sassafras and we will be back later. I'm Sarah, the Real Simple Mama. Thanks for watching, guys.